Ben's Nest Secrets to Reveal documentary. In this documentary, I will be discovering for you and everyone who is watching this program the secrets of this geological park in Dudley. Dudley is well known as the centre of the black country, which is the birthplace of the industrial revolution. The black country in the 90s was described as black by day and red by night. This was because of the glow, red glow, and fumes from the furnaces. But today I will show you even the older mysteries. And these mysteries are taking us way back into the Solarian period. We will discover the hidden history that nobody knows of. And we will discover of the latest destructions in this geological park. Now, follow me on this incredible adventure. Here we are. We travelled 427 million years backwards. And as I promised you, we are right in the middle of a warm, calm and shallow sea. The Earth is very different from what you know of our days. The moon is much closer and a year lasts about 380 days. Hmm. Does it make it have more holidays or more school days? Moreover, the continents do not look like what they are at all. We are in the South Hemisphere, not far away from the equator, on the edge of the Lapidus Sea. The climate is four degrees higher than nowadays, and as we are close to the equator, the sea is warm. Look at this weather forecast made by Trollobite TV. The water is 25 degrees Celsius at Dudley. Woohoo! Let's go back home now. If you don't believe me, well, if you don't, have a look around. Oh, as you can see here, there's a person. It's actually quite a large fossil over here. That is a quite big shell. You may be thinking, well, fossils. Fossils were once living things that died a long time ago and then transformed into rock and left their traces on the rock. And here I have got another shell, uh, but it's a different sh type of shell then the other one, the big one, so they couldn't have been like related. But this one is a baby. And it's quite cute as you can see. You will see a bit more later on. So, let's get on. The fossils you can see here are from the Silurian period, more than 420 million years ago. As you can see, on this timeline, the land was starting to be only colonised by plants far away before the dinosaur period. But the seas, and especially warm and shallowy seas like here, were teeming with life. Let's see what kind of animals you could find in a reef like Wren's Nest during the Silurian period. 
Stromatophoroids, an ancient kind of sponge. Brachiopods, which look like clams, but have a different lifestyle. Trilobites, that crawled along the seafloor. Gastropods, which look very similar to modern gastropods. And cephalopods, that were the giant predators of the Silurian seas. Everywhere you look, you find fossils more than 420 million years of age. You find here brachiopods, sponges, trilobites, gastropods, sea worms, crinoids, and corals creating the reefs. Look at this! This is coral. It is like gigantic. It, but as you see closer, it seems like it's actually a group of corals in a sort of circular uh, image. We are at the Geological Library. But think for a second. You might be thinking, well, why are you calling all these rocks, aerial rocks, a library? Because this is no library. This is no such thing like a library. Well, because there's no books. Well, actually, you are wrong. Because the rocks themselves are books. And to read this gigantic book, all we need just to do is to look at the layers. As you can see, some are muddy this one is muddy and it's easy to crush as you can see here and others are hard like this limestone and that is my one explanation the movements of the sea you might know quite a few like earthquakes that's a type of the movements but the movements i'm talking about are the movements of shallow and deeper water you're going to find out a bit more about what happened about those and why they affected the layers a layer is harder because it contains animal shells which gives it a source of calcium carbonate this type of idea is used by the humans to harden some water for thousands of years. For example, they crush snail shells and add it to the mortar to mix it to create a very hard mortar. The presence of shells means the sea it was shallower and was thriving with life, while the mudstone layer is proof that the sea was deeper at that time and way less life in those times in this way you can read the history of the sea when it was shallow and when it was deep so here we are at the second library like last time's one here we have still those mud layers and and also limestone layers but we have also an extra one because this one was a bit further than the last one because that one was the one we just had before went way less back forward than this one goes much 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 further this one was actually demanded to be built by miners for for scientists so then they could study these rocks that are just around us right now we can't see very much of it like right in the middle because there is mud that started covering them over and over again 
But here we are with the second, uh, the extra layer. As you can see right over there, there is a yellowish, orangey clay surrounded by the blackish sort of rocks. Well, that is a critical sign. That means a, a massive explosion from a volcano came from nearby and disrupted this whole area and made quite a lot of damage and must have killed quite a lot of the life. Let's now ask to our geological expert, Isabel. Isabel, can you explain us why there were volcanoes near Dudley? Well, the short answer is because we were in a subduction zone. But what is a subduction zone exactly? Um, subduction is an incredible geological process in which two tectonic plates hit each other. The tectonic plates are the giant jigsaw pieces of crust, which is the rocky and solid shell of the Earth. Actually, these plates are floating on the melted rocks beneath it. They are in continuous movement. They are not stopping gliding or separating from each other with incredible force in places. In a subduction zone, two tectonic plates collide and the heavier plate dies beneath the other plate and sinks into the mantle where the rocks are melted. Some of the fluids released by the subducting plate start trying to come back up and forms volcanoes when they reach a surface. In this way, the subducting plate triggers volcanism in the overriding plate. More than 430 million years ago, the Avalonia plate was sinking under the Laurentia plate. The subduction created volcanoes in the region. The layer of ash we can see at Wren's nest was made by one of those volcanoes that erupted once. What happened next? The Avalonia plate continued to sink under the Laurentia plate and to be consumed into the mantle until eventually the Lapatus Sea completely disappeared. The final closure of Lapatus Sea corresponded with the fusion of Scotland and the northern part of Ireland. What were the consequences of the eruption we can see marked in the ash layer today? Well, this should have been a terrible and violent event that should have killed most of the life living in this part of the sea. But life would have probably recovered very quickly. You can see that the layer next to the ash layer is a limestone layer and it is full of remains of sea creatures. Well, thank you, Isabel, for every question you've answered and everything. Um, well, um, thank you again and I hope we will be able to ask you some more questions later on. Right. Thank you. Goodbye. Here we are at the Great Rubble Facade. This facade, as comes from its name, has tons of ripples. You might find ripples on the, on the beach when low, low tide comes in and high tides come out. These were made in the Silurian seas during the Silurian period. But there is a problem. Left there upwards, not lying down. So how could there be seabeds? Well, they are seabeds just because of con continents colliding with each other and making those facades growing up. So what happened is that a a one of the tectonic plates hit the Europe, European tectonic plate and 
uplifted these seabeds to be up like this. Isabel, it's great to have you back. And I've got one more question for you. So, can you explain to us why and how Wren's Nest Seabeds has been uplifted? Hey, this is again because of the tectonic plates. Again? Yes! The tectonic plates continue to move in the next hundred of million years. This time, what is deadly today moved to the North Hemisphere. This large movement eventually created the unique continent, the Pangaea. So that means the Pangaea was created after Ransness reefs were created. Exactly. Ransness reefs are much older than the Pangaea. And as the Pangaea was created, the plates collided because they were heading for one place on the globe. This collision created mountains. Look at this experiment. There are different layers of flowers and coffee, each representing the rat layers. When you push them, you can see the layers are folding, forming sort of waves. This is exactly what is happening to rats when the layers are crushed. The incredible force moving the tectonic plates are over a hundred of million years created a mountain range probably as high as a Himalaya in south of England and uplifted Wren's nasty beds. This is exactly what you can witness today on these magnificent ripple facades. Well, thank you, Isabel, for everything you did. And also, I hope that you will come next time on the next episode of the series. So, here we are now going to talk about weathering. So, weathering, there are many types of weathering happening to rocks like these. There are so many that we're not going to be able to talk about all of them but first the first one that we're going to talk about is rain actually there's two types of rain attacks in weathering that we know so far of is just the first one which we're going to talk about now is rain normal rain and also the second one is called three store which we're going to talk about later on and first talk to start off with rain the first type we're gonna, I'm Why? gonna do a little experiment with my bottle right here. As you can see, they've loosened a bit, ready to get off. And you can actually start pick them up to pick them up. And there are also these. Are, this is a layer of mud, and as you can see, it turned a bit into mud. So what happens with this type of weathering is that a rain comes down, and and it drags off boulders or small tiny rocks that are loose and rush them downhill and that's how we end up with loads of rocks behind right in front of me but behind you right now um that are lying down as you can see right now these this is this is because of that type of wiggling that there are so many rocks down there because the water is dragging them down and I would like to show you one of the channels that um, ha that was created not a long time ago. So can you please go and follow me to show you this channel? As you can see here, there is a sort of channel running down. And this is how the water comes down and it's this one of these runways of water coming down and those ripples you can see a bit uh, 
all all around were created by the water rushing downhill and coming down there. Here we are back at the um, ripple facade as we talked about earlier. Um, and now we're going to talk about another type of weathering which is called freeze thaw. Freeze thaw is a special type of um, attack from rain again. This rock um, was this was cut down by freeze thaw. Freeze thaw is when um, during the day water rain just comes down these faces and, and comes down into the cracks and loose and then well the night comes it freezes into ice which widens up the crack which also makes it deeper and when the sun comes back on it melts back into water and it falls down the crack and it does that over and over again and this boulder is just how it was attached when that boulder came it laid down on this pile of dirt and stopped here and making it able to be visited. Here we are at the top of Brand's Nest Hill. But as you may know, this side is going this way and this side is going that way. So what we would ex expect would be a dome. You might be thinking at first go, well, a mountain. Well, no, it's a dome. Like in this image of a dome in Cornwall, in a beach. But this one hasn't got a top like a dome. And that is because of another type of weathering, ice sheets. Ice sheets were gigantic during the last ice age. We scientists believe that this, this whole area was carved out by the last ice sheet that struck Europe during the last ice age. And it was believed that the last one would take would have taken a more than a million ton of rock from the top of this hill and as you may know there is also other hills that are made from the same rocks than here like Dudley Hill, Dudley Castle Hill I mean um, or the other hills around this site have been made by the same rocks and we would also accept on them a dome but they're because of the same thing as here in Wren's Nest on Wren's Nest Hill we these were also carved from the top into a flat top and by the ice seeds so here we are in the valley and as you might guess in the valley there is some facades and there is some in this valley and in this valley there is trees which gives us a chance to talk about a another type of weathering which is created by living things especially plants with their roots so I am going to show you a few examples and the first one is right behind me as you can see its roots are right inside the rock and that is because at the very start of its growth each root would find its way into a crack to get some water and because of that the cracks are getting widened because while the tree is growing the roots are growing themselves too, which widens at the same time the cracks. And so, at some point it comes loose and breaks off. Now let's move on to the second 
second example. The second example is right over there. And if you look carefully, there is a big white tree. And that big white tree is what happens at the end. As you can see, all its frontal roots are outside of the rocks. That's because all its roots pierced right through the rocks and made them so loose that they just broke off. Here is another example right behind me. This example is much more impressive because this is the middle stage. This one is where the rocks are loose but they haven't fallen yet. It is just between the first two stage we saw when the, the it started the cracks at the first time and then the second one where the cracks beaten the rocks and the rocks are fallen. Here the cracks beaten the rock but they haven't taken them away yet. Here is another impressive example. Last winter I took a picture of this tree. As you can see, the frontal roots have beaten the rocks, letting the roots dangling down into the void. Today, six months later, the same tree has beaten all the rocks and has fallen down into the void, as you can see on this picture. Here we are going now to talk about the last living thing that has struck hard in this area. Right behind me is the Seven Sisters, which are the last remaining mines of this area. In this area, you would have find mines, mines, mines everywhere. Everywhere you look, you could see a mine, then uh, somewhere else a mine, and a mine, and then a mine, and then a mine. And now, there's only these seven areas that are still here. It's, they have stopped since the miners' cost dropped and could, they couldn't buy anything to make it better. And then it became way too dangerous for it to be worked in. And so they stopped. And now they, the, the people of over here that are they are trying to make this a UNESCO area. Now that I have revealed the ancient mysteries of Warren's Nest Hill, you know everything there is about the history of this place, starting way back 430 million years in the Silurian period. You've seen the creatures thriving in the ghost Lapidus Sea. You've seen the immense force of nature powering the tectonic plates and lifting up the former seabeds. You've seen the effect of weathering, remoulding the landscape for millions of years and still days to come. You've seen the impact of the humans in this area and how the geology has taken an immense part in the industrial revolution when the limestones were exploited to be used in the iron industry for changing forever human lives. You can now understand why it is so important to preserve this place and why people are trying to protect for future generations to come and keep hold of these magnificent treasures.